Hey guys, Sarah here. So today we are going to be going over the Morph Diamond. And this is going to be sort of a combination between a uh, Morph Deep Dive as well as a genetics video, as you can see by the board behind me. So uh, what I'm going to do is kind of show you guys why Diamond is such a difficult combination to make. The combination, of course, is charcoal and lava, as you might be able to see back there. Uh, and then I'm going to kind of come back to the camera and kind of explain it a little bit more to you guys. Uh, but before I move on, I do want to say I finally got a TikTok. Uh, I've been putting snake information on the TikTok and it's, it's, it's kind of fun. I like it. So if you guys have a TikTok and you want to follow me, it's uh, Joy Princess Sarah, all one word. And uh, I'll link that in the description down below. I can also be found on Instagram at Joy Princess Sarah. It's the same thing. Uh, and of course, you know, I also have my website, sarahsnakeshop.com, where I have merch and books for sale. And we'll eventually have snakes for sale once they're all feeding and ready to go. And uh, I've noticed that at least 50% of the people who watch me are not subscribed yet. So if you really like corn snake morphs or you just like corn snakes or you like genetics, for whatever reason you're here, smash the subscribe button because there's going to be a whole lot more of all of that content that you guys are here for and I'd love to see you in a future video. I'm going to turn the camera around now and explain why Diamond is so difficult to create and then I'll come back and talk to you guys a little bit more about the morph itself. Also, for anyone who doesn't want to watch me fill out everything on the board over there, if you're not super interested in the genetics videos themselves, I'm going to make a comment down below of the timestamp to go to so that you can skip over that part. Now, if you are interested in the genetics, definitely check it out. It's really interesting. Okay, so we're here at the board and I've gone ahead and written a lot of stuff out. Now, if you've been following the last couple of videos on how to calculate multiple different genes, uh, then you are probably really confused about what's on the board right now because this is very different from what we've been doing. Uh, this does look somewhat similar to what we did in the very first video on Punnett squares to sort of understand how the different sides of the DNA would line up. Uh, and if you're watching this and you'd like to learn how to make and read and understand Punnett squares, I'm going to go ahead and link the playlist of all of these videos in a card above for you. Uh, there's uh, not only how to make and read Punnett squares, but then there's also how to apply that to different corn snake genes, whether they're recessive or dominant or incomplete dominant or whatever. And then the last two videos were how to calculate multiple loci, two different ones specifically. Uh, now this, we are dealing with multiple different loci here but it's very different because they are genetically linked and I'll go over that here in a minute. I do want to sh take a minute to shout out um, Wind Serpents. Uh, she really helped me learn how to understand this and um, I, I did a lot of research on this before I actually sat down and started writing it up and she really helped point me in the right direction so I'm going to link her information down below if you want to go check out her website and maybe buy some corn snakes from her. She has a really lot of nice animals uh, a lot of really nice animals and uh, she also sent me a link on how to understand genetic linkage so I'm going to put that down below as well if you guys want to go learn a little bit more in detail about that. So I'm just going to start out with what I have on the board here and then kind of go through it step by step. So uh, I have the blue or the aqua here representing the charcoal locus and then the pink representing the lava locus. Now the pink dots, the, or any of the dots mean that the gene is present and the X's mean that the gene is not present. Now you have to kind of imagine like these are two different sides of the DNA from each parent, uh, but these are only maybe a very small portion. So when things are genetically linked, it means that they don't really split up very easily. They're so close together on the DNA that they usually travel together. There's actually a very small chance of them splitting up uh, and sometimes it seems near impossible. And that was the biggest problem that we had with diamond was we were doing everything that we thought was right, but we still weren't getting any visual diamonds. So why is that? Uh, so I'm going to go through why it is that it was so difficult to get a diamond and why people thought it might be even impossible. Uh, we know it's not impossible because diamonds do exist, but uh, here's why it seemed to be impossible to begin with. So what we would normally do when we're trying to combine two different gene mutations into a new phenotype is we would breed the homozygous of one to the homozygous of another. Now this is if they're recessive, which charcoal and lava are both recessive. Uh, so we have here a homozygous lava and a homozygous charcoal. And if we breed them together, 
then there's the possibility of the female side one combining with the male side one or side two, and then female side two also combining with either of those. And I've written those out here. So here we have female side one with male side one, female side one with male side two, etc. And you'll see that they are all identical. They all have the uh, they all have one X of each color and one dot of each color, which means that they're normal het for both, which is technically true. Uh, but when you have very closely genetically linked genes like this, they travel together most of the time. And what I mean by that is, it's not that the gene mutation travels together, it's that those two loci are so close to each other that they travel together. So when, you know, mommy and daddy snake love each other very much and they, you know, breed and have baby snakes, uh, each locus usually has the option of splitting off from the other loci around it and then coming back together by random in one of four different ways. Uh, however, when the loci are so close together in the, ch in the charcoal and lava combination, for example, the charcoal and lava loci are so close together that there's not much wiggle room for them to split off. They usually travel together. So you can have a charcoal, like the gene mutation charcoal on one spot but if you don't have the lava mutation already on the other spot very close, then uh, they're not going to be able to split off and do that one out of four possibility and go mix up with other, um, other loci by random. They're going to stick together. So in other words, this part of the dad's DNA where these two loci come together are always going to be connected. So you have dad's side one and two, those are always going to be together on dad's side one and two. Whereas normally each one might split off. So dad's side, uh, so the, say the charcoal locus could move over here and combine with the mom side two in, you know, in, in normal, normal, uh, Mendelian genetics. It's hard for me to explain all of this, but, uh, so normally they could split off and they could do that one out of four possibility that we normally see and what we've been doing. So when we calculate one Punnett square, one locus, we get four different possibilities. And then when we calculate two loci, usually we get 16 different possibilities. But because these are so close together and they don't split off, there isn't that one out of 16 chance anymore. There's only a one out of four chance. Uh, and that's why it was seemingly impossible. Now I'm going to get to why it's not actually one in four. It's just sort of rounded to one in four, but we're going to move on from what we have here. So when we mix these together, these are the possibilities. And I went ahead and labeled these sections A, B, C, and D just to sort of uh, give you guys an idea. So each, each one of these combinations is going to be a different baby or a different set of babies. And we're not going to know which one is which, uh, but we can assume that any of these sets could potentially breed back together. And that's what this list is over here. Uh, you have the A plus B, A plus C, A plus D, and so on. And you could even combine um, A plus A, B plus B, etc. Since these are all identical, it's not going to matter. Now, the charcoal and lava with the genetic linkage, that's the only time that we can use charts like this as opposed to a Punnett square to calculate multiple different genes. And that's because of that genetic linkage. It's because they move around together most of the time instead of splitting apart. So any genes that do split apart from each other, those are going to have to be put into a Punnett square. They cannot be calculated with the charts like this. So just keep that in mind when we're going along here. This is just to sort of visualize the issues with genetic linkage. So I went ahead and picked two random babies, A and C, to calculate down here. Since all of them are the same, it's not really gonna matter which ones we breed together. So uh, if you do A1, you can do A side one with C side one or C side uh, two, and then A side two with C side one or two also. And what you will get here is one quarter of them are homozygous lava, one quarter of them are homozygous charcoal, and then the other two are heterozygous for both, which is not something that you normally see. Uh, but you will also notice that the homozygous versions do not have the option of being heterozygous for the opposite gene. And what we normally see if we breed a, uh, let's say we have 
some normals that are all het for amyl and anery, we normally see that some of them, some of the normals that come out of that, do have a chance of being possibly het for either of those. But we don't see that with this genetic linkage because they move around and they're so close together. Amyl and anery are either really far apart on the same chromosome or they're on different chromosomes. Anytime that they're far apart, they can split off from each other and then go do their one out of four possible combinations. Uh, but since charcoal and lava are so close to each other, they can't usually split apart. Like I said, they have to move around together. So this is not something that you're ever going to see with like, like I said, amyl and anery, or even if you're doing amyl with charcoal or lava with diffuse, those are not going to be close together. It's only the charcoal and lava that we know of so far that are close like this. And that's why I'm calling it the diamond exception. So uh, how in the world then, if we cannot even get one that's het for the other, how in the world are we gonna get visuals? We know that visuals exist, so how is that possible? It's possible because of the recombination events that happen when DNA is coming back together. Now, I went ahead and made this little chart here. So let's just say this is female side two and, or females, the female side and the male side, and obviously there's one and two. Uh, and I want to kind of show you guys this so that maybe you can get a better idea of why this happens. So we have our charcoal and our lava up here, and let's say our female is the charcoal in this case, and the male is the lava. Now, charcoal and lava are so close together up here, and then these other genes are far apart. We can call these other genes whatever we want. We can say that maybe they are lavender and, you know, dilute or something like that. They're far apart, so these will split off from the main when the recombination events are happening. So those will all split off and then they'll do their one out of four combination possibilities. But since these are so close together, there isn't that one out of four chance because they typically move together. However, there is a very, very small chance that they will split apart. It's just not very likely. Now with everything else, we have our one out of four possibility, but with these, it's actually more like a two out of 100 chance. So there's only a 2% chance that these will ever split apart from each other because they're so close. However, if they do split apart from each other, then we could potentially get what we want here. And I'm just gonna remember the placement of these. We could potentially end up with our um, four different possibilities. Now there's only a 2% chance of us ending up with our four different possibilities, but it is still possible that we could end up with, you know, these ending up, I'm not going to go ahead and draw them all out, but there is a possibility of us ending up with something like this happening. And eventually after breeding everything down, we could end up with something like that happening. And this here would be our diamond. Um, now that probably wouldn't happen in the first, in the, in like the first breeding, you'd probably still get some heterozygous, but you could eventually end up with babies like this that you could breed together and potentially create the diamond, which is what we would be looking for. I know that that's really complicated, but just remember that one out of four still happens in these recombination events, but there's only a 2% chance of genetic linked, genetically linked uh, alleles to actually split off and do that one out of four. So like I said, I know that's really complicated. Uh, genetics is not simple. As you may have noticed from all of these videos, it's just, it's definitely not simple. And I'm going to go over everything that we did here uh, when I come back to the camera and talk to you guys. So for anyone who may have skipped through some of this or um, was kind of lost in all of it, uh, don't worry, I will explain it a little better when I turn the camera back around. Uh, but I just kind of want to show, wanted to show you guys like why it's so difficult for these to split apart and that they normally will move around together. Whereas the other, uh, the other loci do typically split apart with our one out of four possibility of them landing anywhere else. Uh, these just don't have that one out of four possibility of landing anywhere else because there's only a 2% chance that they're going to split off in the first place. 
Okay, for those of you who skipped over this part and wanted to skip straight to here, I completely understand. I'm going to briefly explain like what the conclusion was right there. So, uh, genetic linkage is why charcoal and lava are so hard to combine. And essentially that's because the alleles for those two, or the loci for those two, those two genes stay very close together. Whereas the other ones are either on completely different chromosomes or they're very far apart on different chromosomes. Or on the same chromosome so it's easy for those other loci to split apart and move around to come back together whereas anything that's genetically linked like charcoal and lava they tend to move around as one instead of splitting apart from each other because they're so close together and there's about a two percent chance of them actually splitting apart uh, so most genes have this like one out of four possibility statistically of recombining in a certain way and um, if the charcoal and lava loci do split apart they have that one out of four possibility but there's only a two percent chance of them splitting apart in the first place so the uh, odds of them actually coming together to make a diamond are very very slim so a diamond corn snake, like I said, it's a combination of charcoal and lava. They're very light, very beautiful. They look very similar to ultramill lavas, if you know what those look like. Um, they're kind of, they're almost pure white snakes, but they have these tiny little, like, gray outlines everywhere. They're very, very pretty. Um, and like I said, they're very difficult to make and they're a very sort of unique thing to have. Now, if you do have a diamond, it's really easy to, to make more diamonds because of that really close linkage. You have a less likely chance of um, if you produce like hets, they're they, you can't really hardly produce a possibly a het diamond. At the end of the day, if you, you know, have a possibly, it, it's kind of hard to explain, but uh, if you breed a diamond to a normal, they're all going to be het diamond, and then any of those normals that breed to, say, another normal that isn't het for either of those things, like, it's going to carry on. So if you start your lineage with a diamond, uh, that and then you may be breeded into a charcoal line those charcoals will pretty much forever be het for lava which is really really interesting so it's really easy to create more diamonds once you have one because they're so closely linked together that those just carry on forever but not forever obviously there's that two percent chance that they won't carry on but um they're, since they're so genetically linked or they're so close together, they usually move as a unit. And when I say they, I don't mean the actual gene mutations themselves. It's the, the loci. The locus is the place where the information for the gene is actually uh, located. And the allele is what actually carries the information for those genes. So um, if the allele for that gene mutation is there, then... Um, that means that it, you know, it's on the locus. It lives on the locus. And when the loci for both different genes both have that gene mutation that we're talking about. So if the the charcoal locus has the charcoal mutation and the lava locus has the lava mutation, those are going to move around pretty much always except for maybe that 2% chance that they'll split apart. So uh, if you have it, great. If you don't have it, it's incredibly difficult to get. And that's kind of why I wanted to go over it with you guys, because it is sort of a genetic anomaly in corn snakes. It's the only pairing that we know of that acts like this. Uh, there, there is probably more out there. I mean, I'm sure there's more out there because, you know, there's so many different factors and so many different genes that go into like DNA and stuff. But as far as these two gene mutations being so close together that they move together 98% of the time, it's actually incredibly rare and incredibly interesting and so I thought that that's something that you guys might want to learn. Uh, if you've watched this far, thank you for watching. As I mentioned uh, in this part, the board part of the video, thank you again to Wind Servants for helping me figure this out and for helping me understand. Uh, and her stuff is linked down below as well as the information that she linked to me. So I'm going to be linking down below a website uh, where you guys can go learn more about this stuff, which is, which is where I learned a lot of this stuff. And I'm also going to be linking her her website so that you guys can go check out her animals as well. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope that this was at the very least interesting, even if it was very difficult to understand. If you guys have anything you want me to cover in the future, just let me know in a comment down below. Smash the like button, smash subscribe, do all that stuff, and I'll see you in the next video.